estimate mm -hmm. of the gradient of the curve at that point, x equals 1. Mm -hmm. And it's getting closer and closer and closer to that point. And the limit is going to be, as you said, 2. The sequence to go from 2 to another point and drag it close until you've got an approximation for the gradient. I'm hopefully thinking that you're going to use um, some symmetry in this graph. Speed that up. Gradient of 2, it's about like that. Has it got that gradient? No, no it's, it's, it's minus 2. It's minus 2. Okay. That's how can we use symmetry? That's how we can use symmetry to speed this up. Is there a function there for the gradient? Looking at that. There is. What is it? It's what, mm. what times 2? You take the x value and, and you times it by 2. Okay. So, what does that mean then? That means that for the function y equals x squared, the gradient is always twice x, twice the x coordinate. You can give me any x coordinate now, and we should be able to find the gradient on that curve. Okay? x is 0.5, we can work, we can work it out. Okay? Mm, it's going to be... For x4, I would use symmetry, don't worry. But no way. Q. Is y negative and x negative makes it positive the gradient or not? Yes. Might not be reflective symmetry, but there should be some symmetry there. Is it for zero, is it? Oh, horizontal. It's not it's not as obvious, is it, as uh, y equals x squared. How about x equals one? Three. Got three for that. X equals two? Twelve. Twelve. And x equals three. Mm. Right, is, th is there some symmetry in there? Yeah. Yeah, we'll come to No, no. I was talking about the general formula. Right, we'll come to that in a second, but can you see some symmetry in there? Yeah. yeah. It's just... So? It's the same. Well, okay, you get the same values. But, but how, would you how would you describe that symmetry? Negative. 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 No, the no. symmetry is no, on the opposite way. It's like when you rewind. I mean, it's, it's starting from the further numbers and going to the zero, and in this case, going from zero and going to the. Okay. So it's reflected on the y-axis and on the x-axis. Right, because that that's got a line of symmetry, hasn't it? There. It's reflected about the y-axis. Y, both axes. No, in the minus y. I, I suggested it might not be reflective symmetry. No. Well, it's a shame we've got the new version of uh, rotated. Ah, Active Studio 3. Yeah. Rotate it. Rotate it. Yes. Okay. It's exactly the same thing. Okay. Wow. So it's not reflective symmetry, it's rotational symmetry. It's a breakthrough. Mm. It's a breakthrough. Right, the question is is that a function? Yes. Yes. Is that a function? Yes. So could you could you predict the next one? So if I said x equals four, what would the gradient be for that? Sixteen times three. Sixteen times three. That, that that's a good way of saying it. So for four, we have sixteen times by three. Okay. So how how are you working that one out, Josh? What is it? Uh, x squared Brilliant. We got that. I heard some other people talking about the same function over there. It's x squared times by 3 is the general formula for that, isn't it? Or we could write that as 3x squared. Okay? So, for the quadratic graph, we had what type of gradient function? A straight line, a linear one. For a cubic graph, we've got what type of function there? We've got a quadratic function. Okay. Now, I'll let you go a little bit further and see what happens with y equals x to the 4. So if you go to snap setting on axis. Now, my snap settings there are for point 0.1. That means I can I can move it point 0.1, I think. And I think if you can you can change that to make it smaller. So you could make that point 
zero, one, or even smaller than that. And I think it'll help you drag in smaller amounts. Yeah, so like most of your time to notice, it looks like the pattern is, um, it's a power times by one off the power. That looks like the pattern. Uh, and I said, if that is the pattern, um, how would you test it? Uh, Francesco, how would you test that? Do you think that's right? How do you test it? Test the value of x. Yeah, so I'm just going to do 5 times 3 to the power of 4, 5 times 2 to the power of 4, 5 times 1, etc, etc, etc. And see if you get the same value.